For more on the crisis and EU's proposal, let's go to Errol Kekic. He joins us from New York City. He's director of the Immigration and Refugee Program at Church World Service. Uh, welcome back, Errol. Many thanks. So this plan involves redistributing 160,000 refugees among EU bloc countries. Uh, Juncker called it a swift, determined, and comprehensive response. In your opinion, is this enough? Well, the number itself pales in comparison to 800,000 figure that we have heard Germany expects to receive this year. But we have to recognize that this is the first time a coherent effort has been put forth by anybody within the European Union to deal with this crisis. We stand by to see what actually happens, but uh, we're really kind of skeptical about it. You are skeptical about it. Because 160,000 will really start to address the surface of the problem, but not a problem itself. We understand that this is the largest, largest refugee crisis since the Second World War, and uh, expecting that uh, receiving 160,000 people, quarter of whom would go still to Germany, and I believe 31,000 to France, would really not go a long way in addressing the overall crisis. Errol, um, this is, of course, the worst refugee crisis since World War II. Half a million, nearly half a million, have now crossed into Europe. Over 2,000 have uh, lost their lives. Why do you think it has taken Europe this long to come up with some kind of cohesive plan? Well, uh, I, I, I think we've heard in the previous statement that uh, there is a lack of union in the European Union and lack of Europe in that union as well. I think that uh, several countries have been left to deal with this crisis on their own, and uh, it's clearly uh, understandable why they're struggling to uh, to manage this crisis here, while other countries that uh, seem to be uh, well off, such as the United Kingdom, for example, uh, continuously refuse to take uh, much responsibility for this crisis. I do believe that the uh, public in the um, UK, as well as in Ireland and probably Denmark, countries that are exempt from this uh, responsibility to take number of refugees uh, under this new agreement, uh, would really be very forceful in, in making sure that their politicians understand that this is a shared responsibility. So are you expecting a fight uh, because Poland, Romania, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, have spoken out against this proposal. So is this, do you see a battle shaping up over this? Well, I do think that uh, it's helpful to remember that uh, European Union membership comes with responsibilities as well as benefits, and um, those need to be shared accordingly. I do believe that some countries are better poised to receive larger number of people than others, and Germany has certainly been leading the way. I think we need to A, see the moral ground to Germany at this point in time and say that uh, they have done what none of us have, and then uh, try to realize that uh, other countries need to step forward and do their share as well. Errol, I want to ask you about the tragic drowning of that little three-year-old Syrian boy, Aylan Kurdi, off the Turkish coast last week, touched off a nerve around the world. Uh, do you believe that incident and the death of his uh, mother and brother do you believe that was a turning point in this awful crisis? Well, I certainly think that that tragedy has helped galvanize the pressure that the uh, public has been placing upon their politicians to finally do something about it. And it's tragic to uh, imagine that a three-year-old has to uh, die and wash up on a shore before our politicians des decide to do what is right. And what about Germany? Why do you think so many of these uh, refugees, migrants, why is Germany their final destination? Well, I think Germans have really been leading the way in moral response to this crisis. Um, I think that uh, dealing with their past, uh, they as a as society have evolved to a place where they understand that, um, you know, we've seen this happen before, we'll never let anybody else suffer as much. And uh, they've come forward and really opened their borders, their homes and their wallets to make sure that this crisis is uh, addressed. They certainly have Germany and Austria as well. Errol Kekic, we certainly appreciate your time, sir.